Morning folks, Tuesday. Yesterday we did a poo run, started tidying up. Today we have a piece of wood cut out to cut out to replace that door over there, the door bottom. Possibly a gate to make. And lots more tidying up to do because it's the annual Wicani Jamboree starting on Friday, people start arriving on Friday so we're just going to have a tidy, we're more or less there we're more or less there, Keith's to cut the grass again as you can see it looks fantastic and uh, as we walk out into the sunshine, it rained last night and as we walk out it looks it looks beautiful He's up here, I think I can hear. Yes, there he is. I can hear gates opening and closing. Oh, we did this yesterday as well. We, uh, we put up this enclosure here, put these, uh, these gates across the end of the enclosure. Again, the, again, the top kennels. And there he is, behind bars where he should be. <laughs> right, I'll leave you. Bye now. So we cut our panel. I'm just, uh, I was just talking to my mates. So we cut our panel, we reduced the pallet back to a beautiful Slightly green rotten gate, but it's good. It's it's authentic, it's been here for ages. Right? And there it is. With the reinforcing panel on the right way. Beautifully swung. Not new but perfectly dry cleaned. Just round the corner from this cinema. Bye now. And there we go folks. Pallet becomes rustic gate complete complete with snack look at that it's all right it works well keeps the dogs in it's better than having a pallet lean there it's good and now on to the next job a side up in the polytunnel Yes, folks, it's been Guinness o'clock. <laughs> and there's the gate. There's the incredible gate. We've got to clear out in here, ready for the next bit of fencing. And tomorrow, the polytunnel and a bit more tidying up. See you all then. Bye now. Morning folks. Wednesday. And we have the steel. So we can commence playing on the Holbrook again. How the hell I'm going to lift it in the air, I don't know. But I'm thinking of a hydraulic platform at either side. With a large piece of steel girder under the bed. To lift it. So... And then pop those underneath. I could actually, I think, I think the wall thickness on those is enough. Let's have a look. Yes, it is. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I was going to say to drill them and tap them. But what I might do is just, uh, is just drill them and then put some nuts on the inside. Put some nuts on plates on the inside that can't turn. Uh, and do it like that. It'd probably be easier because if you drill and tap them, you have to be very accurate with your measurements. And uh, 
I've already measured between the fixing holes in the feet and I think it was on the on the plan that John sent me was three foot eight I think and they're not they're not absolutely bang on three foot eight uh, and if I think if you measured three foot eight you might you might need a bit of clearance to get them in but there you go anyway it's come and I can crack on but first we've got a little bit of finishing off to do up at Keith's ready for the Wicani Jamboree and then I'm back on this maybe this afternoon maybe this afternoon but certainly tomorrow and Friday okay see you later and what once was a complete junk hole of a polytunnel all of a sudden becomes a doggy auditorium we've got more chairs to bring in and if it rains they can all come here and have the talk. Bye bye now. So here we are folks, it's Thursday on the road to Killam. And we're shortly about to pass Heno Pit. Which is a chalk pit that chalk was removed from for making roads and building. And uh, rumour has it that when it was, there it is, when it was spring in the, in the 17 and 1800s, a water spout used to appear out of there, which used to arch into the air high enough for a man to ride a horse underneath. So, there's a bit of a feud between Langtoft and Killam. It's called Henhol. Henhol, yeah. Because? Go on. It's, I don't know why it's called hen Because this. Uh, a hen disappeared uh, on the gypsy race somewhere and rumour has it that it reappeared in that pit. Get away! Yes. Wow, that's a good one. <laughs> so, there's a bit of a feud between Langtoft and Killam, even though they're only about two and a half miles apart. And I have been told, and I don't know how true this is, that... Uh, if you just cut off left here, Keith, yeah. and uh, when we get into Killam, yeah. that the during a particular drought, the well in Killam ran dry, and they went to Langtoft to get water, and Langtoft said, "No, you can't have our water." Didn't right? And and this over 200 years old. Just go left here over 200 years old feud still continues at a very low level among those people who were original Langtoft born and bred and there's not many of them left that was the well for Killam uh, and the well for Langtoft was down back street and was much larger but now almost doesn't exist although the well itself is still there so here we are in the outskirts of Killam. And it comes from Kill. Kill. Because there was a Roman pottery. Comes from what? Kiln. Uh, kiln. Kiln. Yeah, as in pottery kiln. Yeah, there was a pottery kiln apparently, oh. a Roman pottery kiln. But Killam was at one time larger than Driffield. And Driffield only expanded because Driffield got the canal and the branch off to Killam was never built. The canal was going to go to Killam as well, uh, but Killam shrank and uh, and Driffield grew, and uh, in the no no carry straight on in the 1700s and previously there was a sheep sale biannually at Killam, uh, which which apparently is supposed to have been hundreds of thousands of sheep and hundreds of thousands, well, thousands and thousands of people. And uh, it was the, it, the more or less the epicenter of the sheep trade in the north of England. But no more. All those wolvesmen gone. Right. So here we go. Tactor! Big tractor. They're all big nowadays. 
bloody hell, I was uh, I was driving home yesterday and there was a combine harvester with caterpillar tracks on it. Rubber caterpillar tracks going like the clappers, making an awful noise. Right. Straight down to the junction? Straight down to the junction, Kate, yes. Straight to the junction. Turn right? Turn right. Right, I'll see you later. We're on our way to take a load of stuff to the CA site and pick up my daughter's boyfriend. Bye now. Friday folks, and I'm not at the workshop. A clean yard ready for pressure washing. Keith's furiously painting tables. And I'm pressure washing chairs. So it's going to be a no engineering week this week, but never mind. Next week, it's whole book full time. What a glorious day it is. The solar lights are charging up, ready to go up in these trees. And uh, we're almost there. See you later. Yes folks, it's a tractor exhaust mended and back where it should be. Unfortunately, this week has been more or less totally devoid of engineering apart from the tractor exhaust because we've been getting ready for the Wicani Jamboree and as you can see the estate looks wonderful when this field came on the market which was behind Keith's house and we looked at buying it, Keith and I the local farmer said to us, well, it sounds like a lot of money now, lad. But in 10 or 20 years' time, you'll never believe you got it so cheap. And that is the position we're in. So Keith cut the grass yet again the other day, and it's looking amazing up here. Just walking through the trees. All these are apple trees and plums. All, all of which Keith planted. This is one that came from his late mother's that we don't really know what it is. Nobody can identify it. But we've planted all these. And the only thing that he planted that he wished he never had was the bloody Leyland eyes, which are, have a date with a chainsaw. About 15 years ago, my mother gave me a little plant pot with an ash tree in it. And there it is today. We planted it, we didn't expect it to survive. There it is. There's a sweet chestnut over there, really beautiful tree. And up the back of these kennels is the area that we just cut the other day with the big tractor, which is now beginning to pop its head up again because there's been some rain. It'll want another going over. But that's not a problem. But as you can see, it's a lot better than it was. That's all, uh, all that white stuff is the fluff off thistles, thistle down. But what an incredible sight and what an incredible view it, it is. We've just finished putting the gazebo up. We've just moved the trailer out of the way so that people can park. There's about 30 people coming this weekend. And uh, we put some little twinkly fairy lights up in the trees. And I think we're finished. It's just gone four o'clock. I've had enough, I'm ready for a weekend off to be honest. It's been a hard week. It's nature. 
I hate nature, it just grows and grows and grows. And no matter how much you try to keep it in order, it just won't have it. That's the sweet chestnut. Don't know what that is over there, it could be a sycamore. But this is what I want to show you in here. This is an interesting one. Hiding away in this little plantation here, beyond the tractor. I might not, I might not be able to. Can I see it from here? No, I can't. It's in there. There he is. It's hiding in here. And it's something that's unusual for this area, it's a yew tree. And believe it or not, it sprang up from a discarded Christmas wreath that was hanging on Keith's door. And it got chucked in here, and there it is. Beautiful yew tree. Right folks, this week saw the release of a video from Haxby Shed which featured me and my channel and it was released at about one o'clock last night and I am pleased to tell you that as of last time I looked I had 1008 subscribers so I've got to get my viewing time up now and all those subscribers are going back and looking through my back catalogue so that could well happen so to you all thank you Thank you so much for subscribing. Thanks to Paul at Haxby Shed for doing the, uh, the video of me and my workshop. And I'll see you all again next week with a solid week of engineering on the Holbrook. We'll get the Holbrook up on the steel. We'll put the, uh, the bra brackets on the back and we'll get the... Uh, County shaft mounted and maybe even get it running. I've been thinking about that dipstick. Best thing to do with that dipstick is make it on the Holbrook. That would be good in a collet. Okay, see you all next week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Bye now.